Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the second uh, webinar of the Hototech India webinar series on food safety. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Daniel. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Daniel, Daniel Magwegwe. I'm a lecturer at Van Hau Larenstein. I am part of the organizing team for the Hototech India webinar series. Uh, today, we have a second webinar on uh, on the journey from plate, from plant to plate. Today we are focused on food safety and high-tech production. Okay, um, let me, are you? Um, okay, so I'm Mark De Reuter and uh, I will be uh, hosting with uh, Daniel the, this meeting. And uh, we look forward uh, to uh, see and discuss a couple of uh, great uh, webinars. Um, and uh, I myself, I'm uh, a project manager, trainer and lecturer with Lentis International. And um, you can uh, connect with us uh, through LinkedIn or through uh, other means. Just a quick uh, reminder, uh, you are muted uh, automatically uh, and we like to keep it that way so that uh, people can just, uh, the speakers can uh, present. Uh, the other uh, thing we, if you are able to uh, to change that, we prefer you not. Uh, also the webcams, please keep them uh, uh, not open. Furthermore, uh, you see that you can ask questions and there's a, a question box for, for you where you can post any questions you might have for the speakers. So feel free to put that uh, in there and then, uh, uh, Daniel and myself will look at those uh, questions and see when we can post them. Uh, there will be a panel uh, discussion at the end, so some of the questions might be more appropriate for us to pick up and discuss at the end. Daniel. And uh, we would like to thank uh, the organizers for this webinar. This webinar is brought to you by Hototech India Consortium. A little bit more about Hototech India Consortium is Hototech India Consortium is a consortium consisting of uh, private organizations, uh, uh, educational institutes, as well as government, whereby they strive towards finding a way of uh, offering Dutch technology as commercially viable opportunities for the Indian horticultural sectors. So you find that companies that are part of the Hototech India Consortium are companies that have achieved a lot of success in the Netherlands. These companies include Svensson, um, Dutch Plantin, Rijkswan, Corpet, only to mention a, a few, which will give more detail uh, in the coming slides. Um, in order to find out a bit more about Hortitech India, you can visit the Hortitech India website on uh, www.hortitechindia.com. Uh, they are mainly focused on uh, horticultural production uh, and providing both knowledge and technical solutions for greenhouse cultivation of fruit and vegetables in India. Okay, so uh, these are the different um, uh, companies that are part of the Hortitech India uh, consortium. Uh, Swenson, uh, a very well-known uh, producer and uh, for greenhouse technology, uh, screens, etc. And uh, we're glad that they are part of uh, our, our group. Uh, FEC at Visgroep, they are a consulting company. They provide uh, uh, a lot of project management in terms of building greenhouses, amongst others. Uh, Hogendorn, they uh, supply a lot of materials and software for greenhouse management and technology. Hendik is in the water management, which is very important, of, of course, nowadays with all the climate change and the dry weather that we experience in many parts of the world. Dutch Plantin, uh, they will introduce themselves a little bit later, so I'll, uh, um, they, they're, they are today part of the webinar as well as Twins uh, Yield. Of course, we've got Rijkswan, a uh, seed supplier, well-known all over the world, Coppert, Biologicus Systems, who these two last mentioned will be part of our webinar three in a week. Um, 
these are the private companies. Uh, La Rive International will uh, say a few more words later. Next to these uh, private institutions, we also have uh, educational institutes as well as government. Uh, for now, Ladestein is a university of applied uh, in, of applied sciences. Uh, it offers education, training, is also involved in applied research. Uh, next to Van Hau Larenstein, we also have Lantis International. Uh, Lantis International is also where Mark is working, um, where they offer a lot of trainings all over the world. They're also involved in a number of projects uh, in different regions of the world, including uh, India, China, uh, and also in Africa, they also have a lot of projects. Uh, last week, we, had, we were fortunate enough to get a presentation from Ilse, Ilse van Dijk from the Embassy of uh, the Netherlands in India. They are also part of the consortium, and they're also making sure that we are success, the success of Fortitech India is ensured. And also, as, and, and also NL Netherlands is involved in the consortium. So, uh... Our main uh, contacts for the Hortitech India is La Rive International, and uh, you will find uh, uh, more information uh, on their website, larive.com. And I think it's important that you have this information. So do you have any questions about the consortium and how we can be of service and help? Please uh, connect with La Rive. Okay, let's uh, go on with a... Um, uh, okay, you will do first the, uh, the program overview, Daniel, and after that we do the pool. Yeah, I, I think it's now uh, after having a brief introduction about the organizers, Mark, I think it's now more important to now get into the program of the day about uh, the webinar on food safety. Uh, today we not only, I think last week we had quite an interesting uh, webinar presentation from yourself, Mariah Strykold, uh, as well as uh, Sumit Suran. Uh, but we looked more at the perspective of the plate. And I think today it is only befitting that we move further down in the chain to look more at production. So today with this webinar, what we try to look at and what we hope to achieve is to get more insights in the national food safety production standards. Uh, we have quite a very wonderful panel which will present to us today. They also look at different production systems that can contribute to food safety assurance. So how is that achievable in production systems? Uh, how, is the, how are Dutch products, services, and solutions contributing to food safety risk management? And furthermore, what we will try to look at is, I think we're fortunate is to have uh, Twin Yields and Dutch Planting mm -hmm. presenting today. Uh, they will look into the role of technology in promoting food safety in horticulture production. How can technology actually advance the idea of food safety? And lastly, but not least, one of our objectives for this webinar is to try and see or to get further understanding on how to mitigate food safety risks during crop production. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully this will also give us an interesting and in-depth analysis on how to deal with food safety from the production perspective, Mark. Excellent, I look forward to the presentations and uh... I hope uh, we get out uh, a lot uh, in relationship to the objectives that uh, you've just stated. Um, why don't we do a, a poll? Um, I think uh, what would be interesting yeah. to us, but especially also to the presenter is, please uh, tell us uh, what, you know, whether you're a grower, trader, knowledge institute, et cetera, please click on it and then uh, we'll show you the, the results of this uh, poll. <clears throat> Please just take time to click on whether you're a grower, a trader, or you come from a knowledge mm -hmm. institute, or you are indeed a service provider. If you do not fall into these uh, four groups, just click on other. We're also happy that you have joined this webinar. Okay, I think we should uh, look at the results now. There you go. 
that's interesting uh it's great to see that we have growers in there um and uh, actually the whole supply chain is represented here um and of course uh, the other is going to be interesting too but unfortunately we have no time to uh, find out who they are in what uh, capacity uh, they are working but great um, it's good for the speakers to know that there is a mix of uh, knowledge institutes and growers there too uh, and uh, we look forward to the presentations thank you for sharing this uh, poll I think it's also quite interesting for our speakers as well to know that we have quite a lot of great growers as well as knowledge institutes uh, as part of the webinar. Uh, for today, we have uh, two speakers coming from uh, Dutch Planting as well as Twin Yields. Uh, from Dutch Planting, we have uh, the managing director, uh, Mr. C.B. Josephs, uh, as well as um, the managing, the commercial manager for Twin Yields, um, Pak De Heer. Uh, we'll give uh, them a bit more detailed introduction later in the presentation, uh, but maybe it's also interesting to find out where are the people coming from in the world. I think mm. we have to be grateful that webinars give us access to get an understanding of where people come from. So please uh, enter if you are from India, uh, and if you are. Of course, India is part of Asia, but if you're not India, but you are in Asia, please uh, uh, choose the second one, Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Americas. I'm also quite curious on this one. Hopefully we're getting a diversity of people joining this webinar today. There you go. Uh, well, India, uh, the majority of the people, and uh, that's great. Of course, uh, uh, this webinar, uh, our target uh, uh, group is India, and it's great to see that people from other countries around Asia are joining as well. And uh, Europeans, I'm sure there's a lot of interest there too from uh, different people that are part of the Hortitech India uh, Consortium. Uh, good. Uh, well, let's uh, move on. Um, and uh, I give the word to Daniel. I think getting also a diversity or a different pool of uh, people joining us for this webinar is also quite exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. It also brings a diversity of knowledge. We also quite, uh, it, it also becomes quite exciting as we share knowledge. I think it is also essential that attendees also get involved in this webinar series. Uh, but to get into the webinar and to get into our next presentation, uh, as we were planning and discussing about these webinars and thinking about production and food safety, uh, from the consortium we were thinking, how do we do this and how do we look at food safety and how do we unpack it from the production side and high tech? And then we thought where the plants grow is really quite essential. Where do the plants grow in the, in, in the greenhouse? And one of the companies that has achieved quite a lot of success in this is Dutch Planting, where they've won numerous awards. I think from India, from the government of India, they've had an award which they've won since 2014, where they've become the biggest exporter of um, growing medium. And they've won this award for since 2014. And uh, they've now become so established in India as well as in the Netherlands. So. We are fortunate to be joined by uh, Mr. C.B. Josephs. Uh, C.B. Josephs is the managing director of Dutch Planting. Uh, he's got uh, expertise in agricultural production, not only just um, growing medium, but also the whole chain of production. So he also looks at it from the business side. Why is food safety important from the business side, mm -hmm. from the safety of the consumer, but also from the side of the plant? So we would like to give this opportunity to Mr. C.B. Josephs to give us more insight on how they see food safety from the side of production as Dutch planting, but also how should growers look at it? Uh, we would like to invite Mr. C.B. Josephs uh, to give us his presentation for today. Good afternoon, C.B. Good afternoon, uh, Daniel. Uh, thanks uh, for the kind introduction. 
Um, yes, uh, please uh, proceed with your presentation. Uh, we'll give you this opportunity to have your presentation. And after your presentation, we'll have questions and discussion uh, to get into more detail from the issues that you would have raised. And uh, we only ask the attendees to be as engaging as possible. And uh, all the best, Zibi. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, um, uh, good afternoon to some of you. And uh, good evening to uh, the majority of 72% from India. It's a pleasure to understand that uh, we have a 50% uh, profile of uh, growers and uh, knowledge centers which is uh, really uh, motivating. And I would like to skip, skip the pleasantries uh, as I have to go uh, right into the presentation because we do not have much time on the presentation. We, uh, as Dutch plant in, we call ourselves innovators and investors in a better world and healthier environment. And while we do that, we open with care for uh, the society, which is quite important for us uh, in this presentation because we are talking about the production as well as the food safety part. And as Dutch planned in our goals are classified under five uh, major pillars, and that is uh, carbon dioxide, water, labor, wellness and circular in uh, co2 we talk about uh, importance of co2 reduction and how we would like to also uh, 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 use uh, renewable sources of energy uh, to reduce the carbon footprint of the product and uh, while uh, talking about the water we take steps in how we can reuse the water in India as well as Netherlands, because later on we talk about that a little bit, how much good water is important in the production. Labor is something very important uh, for the last uh, 20 years and uh, hearing the questions about the labor uh, uh, in India. And one thing what I understood in the labor is, as we always say, for the success of any company, people make a difference. So you care for your labor and they care for your back. So it's uh, when we talk about labor, it includes local management, how they, you educate your labor, effort in uh, uh, their healthcare, especially during these current scenarios and taking care of their pension funds and their future as well. And uh, when we talk about wellness, we, as Dutch planned, and we put a lot of efforts in the wellness of the people who work with us, who are our neighbors and surrounding. And we do that with how we can protect the environment. So as Coyer, even though we uh, come under a wide category in India on the, on the, on the production of, of the um, uh, Department of Environmental Protection, we still take all the steps so that we are socially accountable. And on this part of circular, I would like to say that we talk about on the circular part on how to re re reuse the, the, the product. We work with a uh, natural uh, renewable resource. So we, we, we talk about a product which we try to make out the best from a waste product. So we have that uh, uh, discussions a lot nowadays, how to make uh, best out of your resources, renewable resources. I, I, I would like to keep going on to the next one because I do not want to spend too much uh, time on this. Um, just talk about the company we were established in 1984 and uh, we have our own factories with the uh, supervision of Dutch uh, management. We have our own sales office and management in India. And we grew uh, from uh, uh, the stage where Coir is growing that we will see at a later stage from 0 0.5 million to 10 million cubic meters in 2019. 
and the company is owned uh, by family Van Doren in the Netherlands. And uh, we work with 14 factories in India, and uh, it's situated at the south of India to take maximum advantage of the climatic condition. Coir is sun right? so we need a scattered profile. And uh, we have three uh, factories in Netherlands to take care of uh, the supply in Benelux and Europe. And we focus on reliable, uniform quality substrates. Our, portings, our customers profile include porting soil companies in and around Holland and almost 55 countries all over the world who takes uh, the compress products. Why we do it directly from India is we feel as a company with, uh, which is a Dutch as well as Indian company, uh, the, the better service we can do that the customers should feel that we can deliver it directly from India uh, without uh, losing lead times, better communications and better organization. Um, this is about our raw material, and uh, sorry, I have to go back. I'm sorry, because I was a little bit fast. Okay, I just uh, missed that. But to to, to 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 let you know, the previous slide was about uh, uh, the uh, the production. We we ship around thousand. Uh, uh, 2,500 containers in a an year, and uh, our, we work with an employee strength of uh, 1,360 people all together in our 14 factories. We are also socially accountable with our SA 8000 certification, which we really consider, as I told in the beginning, people make the difference. So for us, we are a people-oriented company to make a maximum results. Our raw material is, uh, uh, coming from the husk of coconut, as you can see, uh, uh, the, this portion, the husk and fiber, uh, this is the fiber goes to the mattress industry and the pith with this byproduct is being used by us. We use the pith as well as we use the whole husk for making chips and in the combination of husk and chips for making our products. So to come back, uh, we are talking about three different products. One is pit, and the second one is chips. And also, we have combinations of pit and chips. And one of our interesting products for the last couple of years is also Coco 15. So, Coco 15 is something which we use a lot nowadays as people need different products to work with. So, using these products, we make uh, 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 grow bags. Uh, this what you see is uh, a blueberry bag, which we sell a lot in Mexico. And these are grow bags or slabs, as you know, which is sold all over uh, Europe and Asia and the Middle East. So uh, just uh, coming back to the main topic, uh, we just uh, have a poll questions and. This is, uh, yeah, already it's there. So um, this is, uh, I don't know whether you're voting it on now or on the later stage, um, because this is quite a surprise for me as well. Can we move to the slides? Okay, that's uh, answers. Type of fertilizers used. Uh, what is most, effect, most affecting food safety? The type of fertilizers used. 28% growing in soil versus growing out of soil. 28% biological control, IPM to manage pests. 28% very interesting. 
with uh, the next presentations in the coming days to come. Uh, the climate in the greenhouse. Yeah, none. People wash their hands. I think since uh, it's COVID, <laughs> most of the people it's uh, in the subconscious mind is about washing the hands. 17 percent. Okay, now we go into the main topic. Uh, it's a little bit history about the world war. Uh, as you can uh, notice, the shortage of uh, food after World War II. Uh, since World War II, the population was increasing a uh, lot. Yields were down, even uh, uh, got affected by insect and pests, and that prompted on the 1950s for the pesticide industry to develop. And the pesticide industries from the 1950s started booming, and countries started uh, getting countless new chemicals. And this continued for decades. And uh, there was no much choice and change in uh, the active ingredients. Um, but uh, since the focus was on uh, more production, and higher yield, this was all justifiable during that point of time. So the focus was, as you can see, high yields and certainty in food. So far, it was good. Towards 1970, the worldwide, uh, we started seeing that the pesticides were getting more and more focused, and pesticides uh, uh, were uh, starting to climb up uh, to sky high. So in uh, the pesticide situations, there were uh, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, herbicides, and nematicides. And all these uh, chemicals, they were uh, at a certain point of time to be found persistently toxic. But uh, the ammon started uh, going sky high and agriculture and horticulture were flourishing never before so as uh, same time the pesticides and uh, uh, nematicide fungicide and herbicides were also going growing but then um, we saw till uh, 1970 the one side of the coin and uh, we started seeing some other parts as well as later so somewhere around 1980 to uh, 1990, the awareness came around and uh, it said this was not the way forward. This is not the way we want to go ahead. And this is uh, just a little history about the Europe. And uh, in, 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 in the 1970s, uh, the focus in Europe was to produce uh, safe and healthy food for future generations. So the growing in protected greenhouse. Uh, started uh, uh, developing in uh, uh, Europe. And uh, the idea was to get less dependent on weather, to have better control, how to steer the crop better without uh, threats on the climatic control situations and the external factors. So better climate, better use of beneficial insects. Uh, for example, from Cobalt from 1970, my good friend Uday is coming with uh, copper uh, presentations in the next webinar, uh, and of course, integrated uh, pest management. That was is the only way forward. And the, the focus was significant decrease in use of chemical by focusing on better technology. That was the idea. And um, by 1970s, when Europe started focusing own uh, uh, protected uh, grow, uh, uh, growing inside the greenhouse, hydroponics, uh, that is soil less culture, started getting a big prominence. So people were using a lot of peat moss, perlite, stone wool, and uh, currently we see uh, this uh, on the stone wool started getting more and more successful. And one of the things what we saw with the stone wool was high yields, high quality of uh, food, 
red uh, less root diseases very less uh, root diseases no weeds uh, no nematodes this was something very important on the final food quality and the safety for the food and this also prompted for a further reduction of applied chemicals so when uh, the protected uh, greenhouse growing was being done you could really control the substrate where we were using and you were really able to focus on more healthier plants you were focusing on really controlling the use of chemicals you were focusing on real uh, uh, area of growing so let us say that you could really reduce your area of growing and you could go for a more intensive horticulture and together with advanced fertilizing yields the increase started uh, growing up to 10 times and even more food became much more safe in europe and around the 1990s the first coir substrate got introduced uh, 1990s the first coir substrate got introduced more to the rose growers in holland and thanks to the rose growers in holland now uh, the, the uh, coir use in other sectors are growing so two people who developed the growth in uh, coir substrates from 1990 was one uh, uh, the rose growers in the beginning second the efforts and the technical support by rsp these two uh, efforts have steered the growth of uh, coir into uh, what it reached now uh, by the early 2000 in netherlands um, uh, coir uh, was uh, 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 getting the research and the development know-how uh, from uh, the growers from rhp uh, different trials and experiments were done and the knowledge was later on shared from 2000 to 2005 worldwide how uh, to help the development of uh, growing using coir in a better way why coir it's a hundred percent natural organic substrate it's uh, from the husk of coconut it's uh, with the short cycle renewable recyclable and uh, low co2 emissions and uh, it uh, gives minimum or new uh, same yield as sown wood in fact i would like to rem rem remember my colleagues and uh, counterparts in uh, the sown wool business some of the big business in the united states and canada were also developed due to their support right and easier growing uh, climates coir is more forgiving and biological products could be more implemented uh, to enhance the quality of food and to enhance organic fertilizers by reducing the residual effects in the final crop and plant resilience resilient organic growing is the future that is something which we all would agree and uh, this is the time i would like also to talk uh, on the food safety and i would like to uh, uh, talk about it will really um, take decades to get rid of the impact what we have on uh, the, 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 the food, the, the negative impact of chem chemicals and different things. While uh, preparing for uh, this presentation, my mind stuck up with one of the movies what I watched quite some time back. And uh, something interesting came up. If you look at our childhood, how many days uh, did we get absent from the school? Did we really have to be concerned about washing vegetables, what we purchase, like what we do now? Now we do it for uh, safety from the virus. But did we really get worried what will be on the, on the, on the vegetables, what we buy? Uh, we say that we need the vitamins from the vegetables and we had vitamins. But are we now really giving vitamins for our kids? or giving them uh, chances to have uh, at a certain age 
cancer. We, we, we were very much concerned at a certain point of time about how much uh, we, were, we are getting affected by the uh, meat and uh, eggs. We were really uh, thinking some years back, are our daughters getting into puberty earlier? Are our boys, our sons, uh, uh, developing uh, 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 female hormones uh, by consuming certain type of uh, uh, meat and haploid eggs? But we thought, OK, let's change the vegetarian uh, routine and let's ignore. Still, it's considered almost 200 uh, diseases are coming, starting from diarrhea, depressive uh, diseases to cancer. If you remember the first presentation, first webinar, uh, Sumit was talking about at least having some people who died of cancer in every family. I think it's high time. We have to start thinking what we are going through, why food safety is important. So coming back to the presentation that many of these countries are on the road, following this uh, route from the uh, Holland. Uh, European Union, uh, often inspired by the Dutch and the knowledge, the Americas, the East, the China, Russia, are all going fast into safe food production. African countries, Middle East, and of course, uh, let's say because our majority profile are Indian viewers, and this is about India, we also have to look into how we can go into this route in future for safe food production. Just uh, without talking about uh, the uh, FSS Act in 2006, uh, we cannot talk about the food safety. Uh, the Food Safety Act in 2006 is uh, coming on the background of amalgamation of so many acts starting from 1934, uh, whereby a uh, lot of uh, focus was starting from the past on how to prevent adulteration and later on to the food safety. So I, I suggest as a, 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 a citizen, it's, it's everybody's right, whether you are a grower, whether you are a dollar sender, or whether you are a retailer, or whether you are a consumer, it's your right. You have a right to have safe food. It's your duty to produce safe food. It's your duty to sell safe food. It's uh, your duty or it's your right to have a safe food. So uh, the FSS Act, I think if uh, as viewers you get some time later on, you should go into it because time does not permit me to go in detail. It's uh, with 12 chapters and 101 sections uh, telling, talking in detail about what are your duties and what are your responsibilities? And FSSAI is one of the statutory body who is putting a lot of effort to make sure that the Food Safety Act is being implemented. It's the statutory authority. So, um, as uh, Dutch Flandin, and I'm also talking about uh, a lot of uh, hydrophonic. Uh, uh, supply substrate industry and greenhouse industry to, to focus on substrate growing into the greenhouse uh, in, in, in regard to safe food. And why, like uh, we mentioned earlier, in a greenhouse we have climate control, we have the substrate. So it's not like on the soil, if you have one pot or one tray, or one grow bag which is infected, uh, infected or showing signs of risk, you are always able to discard it at an earlier stage. You have now uh, premium climate control. If you look at the consortium, you have automated climate control. Uh, you have retractable uh, greenhouses helping you to uh, control better. You have uh, beneficials uh, for uh, uh, beneficial insects uh, to help uh, better integrated pest management. Altogether, 
using substrate growing in protected greenhouse is answer to safe food and coir industry is also putting their part to ensure that safe food growth and dutch plant in thanks to the horticulture consortium um, we are also trying to put our efforts how we can contribute locally as an indian uh, company who is producing and exporting we also want to make sure that we uh, contribute a lot to safe food production in whichever way we can uh, small research uh, i would not talk about this in detail but it will be still uh, good to understand that uh, spain year 2004 can be taken as an indication on uh, for many countries who are growing extensively in soil at the uh, old fashion and uh, with the chemical approach. So it's uh, in Almeria, there was an estimated 18 times active ingredient consumed for tomatoes and 16 times for pepper and 26 times, uh, sorry, uh, 16 times for pepper and 26 times for cucumber. Uh, and this does not include uh, the soil infectants. This is uh, the active include ingredients of chemicals and we are taking uh, holland as a reference there which you will see in the next slides this is the table as you can see uh, in uh, tomatoes where the yield in almeria in uh, spain was nine kilograms per meter square where netherlands had 50 kilograms per meter square where active ingredients was compared to nine and the holland was taken as a reference sweet pepper it was uh, uh, six and 26 cucumber it was nine and 70 where you can see the difference in the active ingredients and you know this is something which can show that uh, the, the dutch way of uh, focusing on uh, putting uh, efforts as a, a protected greenhouse growing using substrate without really uh, risk taking huge risk in health you still can achieve yield you can still uh, produce uh, food in a much higher uh, volume without compromising on the quality as well as your health uh, thanks to wageningen university uh, we did a re research in 2016 on emission free uh, growing of peppers the focus was zero discharge of nutrients and pesticides into environment. Uh, if anybody needs more information, they can contact the university or us. We are ready to share more information on this. And the focus was uh, to gear up and be ready on the zero emission. So in the 2016 experiment, we found out that there was no need for discharge for the growers in a traditional way of high sodium uh, and uh, uh, in rainwater uh, filtering or rinsing for uh, fear of diseases and unbalance in the circulation and uh, of the nutrients and still yet without compromising on the quality still produce high quality uh, product and the quantity and uh, in 2017 we did and emission free on the growing of cucumbers. Uh, in the trial, we put a, a trial one, we had a buffered and washed. Buffered is a, a product treated with calcium uh, and uh, washed is uh, not treated with calcium, just with a low salinity. And uh, the trial two was washed only with a no treatment, but we gave an extra calcium in the beginning so that it does not uh, go back into the uh, emission systems. The result is uh, sodium stayed less than two millimoles per liter in the drain water in the both systems. So uh, the fact was no need to dispose drain water, no need to, uh, to have high uh, efforts on the filtration systems and still maintain good production levels of the product have a high quantity without compromising on the quality and uh, we have products five kilo blocks 
briquettes of several types and uh, uh, grow bags. And this is about us. I do not want to spend too much, but we still uh, like uh, to offer the product according to the grower. When you uh, like for our customers, we like to give tailor made solutions according to their need. Um, we are looking into substrates for growing sustainable. Sustainability is a word uh, which you come across a lot nowadays. Uh, organic production, sustainability, these are all interesting facts. But uh, while, while going through this production, I looked into one word uh, concerning food production, which is responsible. Uh, so as product producers, let us be more responsible. As uh, uh, knowledge centers, let us uh, ensure that uh, these producers and uh, users are more responsible. And uh, as uh, retailers, let us say that push uh, the growers more into an angle where they are producing more responsible. And as consumers, let us say that if the growers and retailers are taking a responsible approach, let us be also responsible to say that uh, this is a safe product. It's my right to have a safe uh, food, but I'm ready to pay a little bit extra for that to maintain the stability. So let uh, the, 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 to, to make sure that system works, that the, the producer should be happy, the, the person who is selling should be happy, and we as a consumer should be happy. So responsible growing, that is a much important word. Let us be responsible. Let us be socially accountable. Let us be uh, responsible for our towards our future generation also. One of the things what uh, I, I also want to include is, I, I see often a discussion in a lot of cases while preparing for this seminar also, a lot of uh, uh, friends from the Agriculture University also was mentioning uh, on the pesticides and chemicals. Uh, one of the things I want to comment here also is, if you look at uh, ourselves as a person, and if you are treating ourselves, let us say that, you know, we all take vitamins. We know that A, D, E, K, they are fat soluble. Vitamin C and uh, B, they are water soluble. Do you think that you start taking more of these fat soluble A, vitamin A or D, just because they are available in plenty or you just want to be more sure? No, it has also side effects. It, it needs uh, uh, fat to solute it. The impact can be on your livers. So you can have pesticides, but we also should be sure that are we using it to the prescribed dosage? Are we using the pesticides and chemicals according to the prescription of our agronomists or the knowledge centers? Are we careful by not overusing it. Very important. Also making sure that the fertilizers, what we are using, please feel free to ask your suppliers for anal analysis. What are the contents? Are they having uh, safely checked with heavy metals so that you don't want to have lead, arsenic and all coming back into your product, uh, harming the next generation? Like I said earlier, the biggest importance, the, the vital part of having safe food is also making sure we, we hear a lot about nowadays about self-love. What is self-love? It's preparing your mental state, love yourself. If you love yourself, also one should put more effort in loving your health. Make sure that you put uh, efforts on your health, start understanding, like getting a KYC, the banks get a KYC. As a company, you take KYC, take KYCs for the inputs you buy, whether it's your substrate, 
your pesticides, your chemicals, know your supplier. Get KYCs, get information, what are the ingredients in it. Get it tested by yourself in labs, even uh, as uh, retailers, I do not know, telling is very easy, but I see in a uh, lot of other countries other than India, where the retailers insisting on certifications, on uh, products being tested. I, I know uh, there are friends from Middle East who are watching this. I think they would know that how the Middle East Asia, the government has gone strict on the vegetables and fruits being tested in residual toxicity and uh, heavy metals and uh, the contaminants. Let us also as India focus and uh, look into aspects where in the future we can go in that angle and be a more responsible uh, people as responsible people for producing responsible food products. Um, I would like also to take uh, this opportunity if I have time to show one of the cute uh, movies uh, to show you a uh, uh, production of the product. I'm sorry, I could not. Uh, yes. I don't know, Daniel, it's uh, taking time. And uh, the discussion uh, by thanking uh, the Hoti Culture Consortium um, and uh, um, all the support uh, provided last couple of days by Mark, uh, Daniel, uh, Wim uh, for uh, being prepared for the presentation. Um, if uh, countries like uh, Spain in Europe in uh, the 2004 can improve, countries like Mexico. Um, can uh, come into the focus of uh, improving uh, the production quality uh, by focusing on safe food production, India can also do. It has only to do with uh, putting a little bit efforts from all the sectors and uh, let us not wait for other sides to react. Let us not wait for the chicken and egg story. It, like each and every, um, members of the society, let us also focus on production for a better, uh, safe future and uh, be responsible towards our future generation. And uh, let us uh, put our efforts for safety. Thank you very much.
Thank you, CV. It's a uh, can every I you can hear me? Just double checking. Yes. Okay, good. Well, thank you for a great presentation. And uh, yes, we we have some time now to answer some questions from uh, the audience and att attend attendees. In the meantime, I just uh, thought it was really great to hear how much uh, effort you put into into social responsibility and ensuring the welfare of your employees uh, and also looking at global climate change and how that uh, is being taken into consideration in your production. Um, so these, these are really good qualities and excellent uh, work from uh, your company. Um, I'm, um, I'm not sure if Daniel is joining us in a minute. Uh, uh, and uh, ah, there he is. Um, and yes, let's see uh, if we have received any questions that we can uh, put uh, before you. Have you? Yes. Uh, uh, in, in, yes. Um, maybe I think uh, the, the audience really appreciated your well informative uh, presentation, and I think it was really quite uh, informative. Um, and they also found uh, the research that you used for your presentation really quite informative but also something that they would like to find out a bit more about. Um, you highlight that uh, there were 19 uh, active ingredients found in Almera in Spain uh, when yes. they did the test. Uh, but if you also look at uh, growing in uh, substrates, uh, what then do you suggest would be the best way to do it? Uh, transfer all the way from production in soil to using substrates or a combination of the two methods? Because I think also coconut is grown in soil. Does it not take up these chemicals? Yeah. Uh, coconut uh, is a product which is uh, grown in big farms. Majority of the farm, uh, coconut growing uh, areas, if you look at the coastal belts, you can see that uh, uh, th this is not grown with uh, a lot of fert fertilizing or fertigation. And um, for uh, years, we have seen that coconut is a product which is not much susceptible to any of the in uh, huge issues. Of course, some years back, we had some issues of the mite attack. But other, other than that, coconut is quite safe. Uh, so far, we have not come across, especially in India and Sri Lanka, who are one of the biggest uh, producers, exporters of the coir substrates with affected by coconuts. So um, as such, we do not see a bigger impact uh, because we, we, we uh, test uh, coir a lot. Uh, take for example for us, uh, our coir is uh, really tested a lot uh, thanks to RSP in almost all aspects. And uh, our other part is uh, we are also certified uh, uh, organic with IMO from Switzerland, uh, which uh, is being tested according to NPOP, that is uh, uh, the National Program of Agriculture according to Indian standards also and uh, same way uh, according to the canadian organic regime also. so here the coir is constantly being monitored for uh, uh, if there are any residual toxicity or chemicals used because it's growing uh, really into certified organic inputs so that okay. is one of the important factors where we are convinced coir as such is uh, an organic substrate. Of course, a lot of uh, producers of coir, like us, they can go to an ex extra step by certifying their product organic. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and and what if uh, maybe just a follow up? Yeah, May, maybe if so I may follow that up. Yes, please sorry. proceed. Proceed. Yeah, to, to add to it, uh, of course, uh, when uh, we have uh, samples for RSP. That's uh, uh, one of the most uh, authoritative organizations in uh, the substrate industry. We are being checked uh, for uh, different aspects of uh, uh, ingredients, including heavy metals and nematodes and all safe ingredients. So that way, 
one part uh, we are also getting verified on the organic part and uh, other part for Holland. And these are different parties uh, mentioning and uh, the tests are done by uh, premium labs in Europe and in Holland. Yeah. So um, the, the, the information is it's uh, quite safe uh, so far. Uh, yeah, I, I had a bit of a follow-up question to that. I don't know if Mark will allow me to have this uh, follow-up question. <laughs> um, you tend to find that there are farmers who want to cut back on costs and tend to reuse the same growing medium for quite a number of crops. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your advice for farmers in that regard? Yeah, we have uh, an average uh, grow back which is being used uh, in certain parts of Western Europe for uh, two years uh, uh, for tomatoes, paprika, and cucumber. Okay, the, 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 the ratio of the, uh, the coir, the pines to cores changes because coir is something which we can steer uh, between the generative as well as vegetative phase. But uh, there are customers in Spain uh, using our grow bags even three years or four years. Uh, so uh, the, the, the duration of the crop is being used. And one of the most important aspect which I like to mention here is uh, my dealer in uh, Western Europe, he has come with a unique uh, advantage. After uh, growing, he collects all the growbacks from the growers and he breaks the growbacks, removes the plastic, he uses the entire uh, coir. Imagine it's loaded with nutrients. He uses it in the fields to enrich as a soil conditioner for uh, growing. So in all ways, a uh, coir as such is being uh, used, reused, recycled till it gets uh, blended with the soil. So finally, it's uh, it's a natural product. So you you, you can use it. Uh, you can yeah. reuse it and uh, you can even uh, blend it with the soil in a later stage. One of the first uh, uses of coir was roses. So you can uh, imagine how many times uh, roses were grown. So I still remember rose growers using it in Holland earlier days. Later on, all the Dutch growers in uh, Africa using it for many years. Even now, we have customers in Kenya and Uganda using it for a very long time. Uh, so coir is some crop, uh, it's a substrate which you can use for extended periods, provided you have aged it properly and you make it stable before you supply it to your customers. Well, wow, thank you. Yeah. That's uh, actually just to mention, I was in Colombia and I saw that uh, the growers there are now moving into uh, choir to uh, instead of soil uh, in the roses as well and so you see this movement happening right now in many countries because of uh, better conditions and uh, also uh, being able to manage fertilizers uh, and nutrients in a better way so it's great good thank you so much for your time please uh, stay with us for the panel discussion later um, i hope you have time to uh, to uh, to be uh, with us and Daniel, why don't you go ahead with introducing our next speaker and uh, then uh, we look forward to our next presentation. Thank you, CB. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank I you would like to thank, thank you, CB. You, yeah, I think it is also interesting to note how uh, the standards and certification that you are using at uh, Dash Plantin, it's also quite uh, interesting to note. and. Uh, I think I would like to thank you for such an informative uh, presentation. And uh, I think it is only, we have understood food safety from the perspective of growing medium and why it is essential to have a dealer whom you understand, to also get a supply from of your growing medium from someone who is well certified, who takes care of not just the plant, but also what is being contained in the growing medium and that is constantly being analyzed. And I think for this part of the webinar, I would like to move on to twin yields, uh, where 
Twin Youth, I think, is one of the interesting companies that we are working with uh, as Hotech India, uh, which is a Netherlands-based organization. And for this presentation from Twin Youths, we have uh, Pak here. I think Pak is uh, well-traveled uh, with education from the US, from the Netherlands, and also experience in India, uh, where he has worked in agribusiness, food chain management, and horticulture. And I think, uh, Park, your experience as well as your knowledge is also essential for us uh, when we're looking at the issues of food safety and also the role of technology. I think Twin Yields is doing a lot in advancement of technology in the horticultural sector. And I think we would like to offer you this opportunity to give us more information on how Twin Yields approaches the issue of food safety and how do you see the role of technology in food safety and uh, I think it's an honor for us to have you during our webinar series. And uh, thank you for joining us, Park. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the nice introduction, Daniel. And yeah, thank you. Thank Please you. Uh, proceed. Yeah. Thank all the attendees uh, for uh, for having me this uh, this afternoon, and that I can uh, uh, yeah inform you all about uh, what Twin Youth is, what we are doing, and how uh, technology can uh, can improve uh, food safety. Uh, as said by Daniel already, my name is Puk de Gier, and I'm the commercial manager of, of Twin Youth. Uh, we are developing horty business projects. For a short introduction about our company, I would like to show a video, a corporate video. Please turn your sound on because it's very important to also have the sound with the video.
that was uh, the corporate video of, of our company. Hope uh, it's all clear to you. Uh, in the end, you saw also the, the project we realized, uh, Nature's Miracle for the DS group. Uh, it's a total uh, total high tech uh, solution for India. And I want to add uh, that we also are uh, together with uh, with the Horti Tech India uh, group. We we were the designer of the of the Tumkur uh, greenhouse. It is more in, uh, a middle tech uh, solution for in India. And today, uh, as I already said, we are going to talk about horticultural technology. And I'm very interested uh, yeah, what, what kind of uh, horticulture technology is of most interest to you. And therefore, I would like to introduce you to, uh, to fill out uh, th this poll. Ah, nice. I see multiple different answers. Uh, some open field farmers, some uh, interested in net polyhouses with soil cultivation, none with a polyhouse with hydroponics, some with hydroponics with climate steering installations, and some glass house with food which installations. Uh, today, I will go through all of uh, these different technologies. So for every for everyone, uh, there's the sum uh, into it. Basically, I will explain you today about all the different technologies available for producing vegetables and how technology improves the food quality, security, and safety. Uh, here you see the, the open field uh, cultivation. Uh, sorry. Uh, I want to make a side note before we start, because uh, the presentation includes certain estimates, assumptions, and projections, because there's done a lot of research, but all numbers for yields, for water efficiency, etc. Uh, yeah. There are different answers possible for that, and uh, therefore I would I would like to make the side note. And my second poll is about uh, how many times more water efficient uh, is high tech greenhouse versus open field cultivation. So if you would like to vote. Nice. Uh, the right answer is 10 times more efficient, according to uh, to our research and uh, and the researchers of uh, of uh, Ruhr University, Wageningen University. So let's go through all the technologies, and I can explain a little bit more about that. But please. Take care of the side note. It is all projections, and it always depends on every situation and all the circumstances where you grow, how to grow, who is growing, what technology you're using, etc. So we start with open field uh, cultivation. Uh, here you can grow about six kilograms per square meter of large tomato varieties. 
but in this type of growing you have a high risk of damage by excessive weather huge risk of damage by uncontrollable pests and diseases to use a lot of water per kilogram of production uh, it has to be 33 liters per water of kilogram production of a large beef uh, tomato variety with high risks of pests and diseases and because of the high risk and the high chance of getting pests and diseases growers are using high pesticides and high and therefore you have a high level of chemical residues on the crop and you are also having a high risk of contamination of the soil where you are growing on there you can see some uh, crops which are very suitable for growing with greenhouse technology in greenhouses um, you can grow for example small tomato varieties the cherry the candy varieties you can also uh, grow the large tomato varieties standard or the beef this one i'm using for all the examples in, uh, in the technologies you can grow uh, different kinds of lettuce or leafy greens but you have to uh, be aware that you need other cultivation systems you can also grow different varieties of cucumbers snack cucumbers colored capsicums and eggplants and this uh, yeah depending on which crop you want to grow it's also depending on your climate conditions market demand and your investment budget the first step in uh, integrating some horty business technology uh, is drip irrigation with including drip irrigation for open field farming you increase the production to nine kilograms per square meter but you still have a lot of risks by excessive water uh, excessive weather and a risk of damage by uncontrollable pests and diseases but the main advantage you see is that you only use 8.8 .8 liters per kilogram of production and i will show you why that is because by adding drip irrigation uh, water is only delivered at the root zone of the crops and studies have shown that drip irrigation system used even 50 or more percent less water than conventional farming uh, methods the smaller amounts of water applied over a longer amount of time provide ideal growth conditions uh, and the drip irrigation extends watering times for plants and prevents soil or erosion and nutrients runoff also because of the flow is continuous water penetrates deeply in the soil to get well down into the root zones where it's better taken up by the plants and therefore more efficient as well and uh, water is only delivered where it's where it's needed why does uh why weeds get discharged and setting and moving of sprinklers is not required this saves labor and time and it can also be uh, run automatically and it helps uh, controlling fungal diseases which grow quickly under moist conditions the next step in adding more greenhouse technology is uh, building a polyhouse and in this example we use a closed polyhouse because that has more advantages uh, you see the the uh, yield per square meter uh going up increasing to 16 kilograms and because you have a closed system there's no risk of damage by excessive weather anymore because with hail and those kind of things uh the crop doesn't get hurt uh you have no damage by uncontrollable pests and diseases because you have a closed systems you can uh integrate uh you have you can have an integrated pest management i will go uh into detail later and you can extend the harvest season because uh yeah you uh you because uh the crop is not influenced by uh by a really warm or colder climates because you can adjust the climate uh how you like it 
and you only use five liters water per kilogram of production. So this is a, a huge uh, benefit. And because of the pests and diseases, you can, because of the low damage by uncontrollable pests and diseases, you need to uh, use less pesticides and you have less chemical residue on the crop, which is safer for, uh, yeah, to eat the crop. But still, because you're growing in the soil, have a risk of contamination of the soil. Because you have a closed polyhouse construction, uh, your crops are covered. Uh, many studies have proven uh, that crops grow in a more ideal environment, which polyhouse provides grow more vigorous than in a field environment. Protection from harsh weather will reduce loss crops, uh, as I explained. Uh, a polyhouse construction protects crop cold temperatures and frost as well as well for example over rainy seasons so growers are able to extend the growing season and grow more exotic varieties because you can have like a different climate than outside and you have off-season production which enables better sales prices because you can sell your produce in the market when it's not available uh, in india and a polyhouse leads to reduce the occurrence of insects and pests and less hospital environment for diseases. The health of an operational soil directly affects the ability to be successful. Cover protects against the rain water causing fertilizer and nutrients runoff. That's also very important for, uh, for food safety because um, yeah, you are very dependent on the quality of your soil. And due to the construction, Rainwater falling on the roof can be collected and used for irrigation, and that really saves a lot of fresh uh, water demand for growing our crops. Uh, as I said before, you can have an uh, integrated pest management uh, because you have a closed system. So all the insects you apply inside, they will stay inside, and pests and diseases will stay outside. Uh, hygiene is very important with IPM. Uh, IPM uh, uses uh, biological control agents as an alternative for uses of pesticides. Uh, IPM reduces the potential for air, soil, and groundwater contamination. IPM protects non-target species to re reduce the impact of pest management activities. IPM reduces or el eliminates issues related to pesticide residue on the crop. And IPM decreases worker, tenant, and public exposure to those pesticides. This is also explained by SIBI in the history. Um, the next step in adding more technology to your polyhouse is growing in substrate with drippers and here you can see the, the big increase in yields going up to 25 kilograms per square meter um, and there's no risk of contamination of the soil because you are growing in growing mediums with for example the core so the hydroponic with substrate Growing soilless with drippers can be done in grow bags, slabs of core, rock wool, or perlite, as explained by Sibi. Uh, and this takes away all negative influence of the soil. You have a faster establishment of the roots and better plant growth, uh, better management crop steering by taking away the influence of the soil. You can have impact on the, on the water holding capacity of the substrate and also on the salt levels. And by closing the loop and recycling the water through the irrigation system, hydroponic with substrates typically use at least 75 to 80 percent less water and nutrients than soil-based soil methods. And low chance on fungi and root diseases, which is also very important for crop health and food safety. Then you can add uh, also hot air heating and recirculating fans and screens. You can see the benefits 
of uh, the yield uh, even a little bit on uh, the water efficiency. Uh, heating and recirculating air makes the plant more active and more resistant in warm climates. It sounds crazy, but when you activate the crop just before uh, the sun is coming up, it, uh, your crop is more uh, resistant to the to the heat coming from the from the sun. So uh, you have better plant growth, and when you are uh, heating just a little bit uh, while using gas, you also add a little bit CO2 to the crop, which is better for the growth. And you have more uh, steering in the greenhouse as that's where you can create like a more ideal uh, grow climate. And growers are able to extend their growing season even more because you can heat and, and uh, crop is more resistant in, uh, in warm uh, climates. So you can even reach year round production and better sales prices. Then a little bit about the screens. We also have our partner Swenson, which is already explained uh, in the Wittitech India group. But screens allow you to partly control the greenhouse temperature, light, and humidity. And yeah, this results in a better plant growth, a more optimal temperature, light, and humidity. You have more steering uh, opportunities for creating the ideal grow climate. And screen can also block the direct sunlight, and this eliminate, eliminates uh, sunburn damage. Uh, screens can also trap air inside the greenhouse and save energy that way and screens can be automated or adjusted manually depending on your level of technology here we also integrate uh, aspirator box and climate computer here again you you can see the, the yield going up And a climate computer is a modular system to automate your irrigation, heating, cooling, ventilation, radiation, and humidity. Uh, all technology you include in your greenhouse, you can link with the climate computer. You can uh, put your settings in and aspirator box and other sensors will, uh, yeah, will uh, communicate with the climate computer and adjust automatically to always have an uh, ideal growing uh, climate uh, so you can also operate your uh, greenhouse uh, yeah as well on site or remotely and it also includes alarms notifications and a backup so you always can look back what uh, happened uh, in the past years you can see what what kind of uh, um, growing strategy works best for your uh, type of greenhouse and for your situation. Uh, climate computers have a user-friendly interface, which is available, uh, available in, uh, in English and, and other many languages. And the software can also be customized. And this is also important for uh, requiring, uh, uh, or sorry, for attracting cultivation advice because now uh, cultivation advisors can uh, yeah, work from distance, log into your uh, climate computer and see exactly what happens in your greenhouse and inform you or adjust the settings or whatever is needed. Here we uh, do the next step from polyhouses, we go to uh, a glass house uh with other technologies uh, inside but we also have the, the substrate substrate on gutters uh, because we have the substrate on gutters and we also have the real uh, pipe heating you have more automation options in the greenhouse uh, 
that the glass house constructions have better light tra uh, transmission and don't have to be replaced every three years, what is the case with poly. Uh, the glass is resistant to UV radi radiation uh, while your materials in the greenhouse yeah, are staying of better quality because the UV is, uh, is not damaging. And the lifespan of a glass house is uh, up to uh, or more than 20 years. Uh, it's better uh, isolation and there's less energy loss. It's non-combustible. However, it's not resistant to like earthquakes and that kind of things. Uh, in a glass house, uh, you can have automated ventilation and real pipe heating. Uh, this better plant growth by better climate control because you can ventilate uh, yeah, how much you want. It's not fixed anymore. And control ventilation and real pipe heating can be linked to the climate computer. So it can be all automated. You can say when this is the humidity, this is the temperature, this is the radiation. My ventilation have, has to uh, adjust to keep the numbers uh, as you wish. And you can, for example, also use harvest trolleys for labor to harvest the crops. Uh, hydroponics with substrate on gutters. Uh, you have different uh, cultivation systems. You have, for example, the NFT gutter. You have a floating system or an app and flow table. Uh, yeah. Growing on gutters can be done with slabs, core, or roku, or, uh, whereby the unabsorbed water will be recirculated and uh, disinfected and used again. And yeah, depending on the crop, you always have to see what cultivation system is, uh, yeah, is the most suitable for your situation. But all of them have a fast uh, establishment of roots and plant growth. And uh, yeah, because you are recirculating all of the unabsorbed water, it uses uh, about 90% less water and nutrients than soil-based methods. And because all your crops are growing on height, you have a better working height for, uh, for labor. The next step is the semi-closed greenhouse with, <laughs> with uh, even a higher yield and more water efficiency as before. And a semi-closed uh, glass house creates the right air conditions in a sub-selection of the greenhouse. So next to the greenhouse, the, uh, the air is coming, up, coming in and uh, it's heated or it's cooled before it even enters the greenhouse through the pipes you see underneath the crops. So they have like an even distribution of the ideal grow climate. And because you have uh, the, the, the adjustment of the, of the climate in the subsection of the greenhouse, you can grow in almost any climate. So after I explained and go through all the technologies which are available for growing your uh, vegetables, I'm very interested if, uh, if your opinion changed a little bit. So I would like to ask you to fill out uh, the next poll again. Okay, that's positive. I see more interest in uh, polyhouses with hydroponics and climate steering installations, and also more interest in glass house with full installations. That's good.
However, you always, um, yeah, sorry, you always have to uh, be aware of all the parameters because every situation is different. You always have a different location, different size of land, and you also have different sizes of the greenhouse and different crops, different cap uh, capacity of the, of the grower, different skills of the grower, uh, different investment budget. So I would recommend to always go to an, uh, to an expert who can advise you on uh, yeah, what uh, greenhouse solution is best in your situation. And as Twinshield, uh, we not only provide like the technology side of uh, horty business, but we also include the, the knowledge and we also want to transfer the knowledge, not only provide the knowledge, but really transfer the knowledge. So in the project Nature's Miracle, you saw in our uh, corporate video in the end, uh, that project we are still uh, yeah, connected with and we have a cultivation advisor who is like logging in the climate computer every day to really teach the, the managers and the cultivation managers on how to deal with the greenhouse and how to create the optimal grow climate for the best yields and the best return on, uh, on their investment. So that was in short my presentation and uh, as twin youth, I would like uh, to say, let's make Horty Business possible together. If you are interested, please uh, visit our site or, uh, or contact La Riva and they will, uh, they will come to us. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Buck, for such a lovely, wonderful presentation and uh, very much in depth. Um, I think um, maybe what we found um, really quite interesting was you quite touched on a lot of uh, technologies. And uh, one of the questions that seem to be also attracting a lot of attention is, do these technologies support food safety and how do they do that? Yeah, they really support uh, food safety uh, because depending on, on the technology, but uh, when you are growing, for example, in soil or growing soilless, as explained by Sibi, uh, that has a huge, uh, a huge benefit for, for food safety. And when you are growing outdoors or indoors, when you are growing indoors and with a closed system, you can uh, use the integrated pest management with uh, biological uh, uh, insects. And on that way, you don't need to use uh, any pesticides or very little pesticides. And therefore, you also have less uh, pesticide residue on the crop. And that's also good for, uh, for for human and nature. And you, when you are growing hydroponically, so also soilless, you don't have uh, the, the nutrient run runoff in the soil. And on that way, uh, it's uh, beneficial for food safety and also food security. And and maybe um, I don't know, Mark. Do you have a question before I proceed? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I was also looking at uh, the semi-closed glass house uh, with uh, mm -hmm. substrate and gutters, and I found mm -hmm. this really quite uh, interesting to look at. Um, but then maybe my fear is, if it is semi-closed, what is the likelihood that there will also be contaminants coming from outside, and how do you control that? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, the semi-closed uh, greenhouse, as I explained, as like a subsection next to the greenhouse, and it lets air coming in, uh, but it's it's like blocked for insects and all other things. So only air is coming in. Then the air is uh, 
yeah adjusted like or cooled or heated up for the ideal uh, climate you you wish and then it's uh, going into the into the greenhouse uh, through the the big tubes you you saw on the picture so you yeah, keep yeah. like all pests and diseases outside of the greenhouse and uh, so it's like a totally closed system and also the, your water irrigation etc it's closed because uh, all the all the drainage is like disinfected again and reused so there's no chance of any pest diseases or anything to come in okay and and, and you offer quite a number of uh, screens as part of solutions that you also recommend for growers um maybe can you explain to us how to select the right screen for your greenhouse and how that helps maybe in issues of controlling uh, any movement in from outside into the greenhouse yeah uh, yeah what i said it's it's very depending on, on your situation like uh, what kind of requirements you have and what kind of uh, of, of greenhouse and technology is uh, is most suitable but uh, for screens, you have uh, different types of screens. You have like the, the screens to, to block, to block uh, sun. Uh, and that way you have like less uh, radiation inside. And so you don't have like a sunburn on the crops, etc. But you also have like uh, uh, energy screens. And energy screens are there for like using in the night to uh to prevent the greenhouse from like losing its its heat uh, and therefore it's it's much more sustainable and you don't need to heat up the greenhouse again uh, but the screen does not have much impact on on food safety only has uh, impact on like the damaging of the, of the crop or keeping uh, the energy and the warmth inside mm -hmm. okay so it's an indirect. It, it, it indirectly it will uh, affect uh, the use of yeah, the, chemicals. It's, it's like a total package. package. Yeah. You have like uh, all installations uh, together. They create mm -hmm. like a like a working system, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, with, with uh, certain uh, greenhouses, uh, they improve food safety. But that's more what I said. It's more like the. If you grow indoors, outdoors, if you grow in soil or hydroponically, and uh, yeah, more um, more technologies is yeah is creating a better climate, so more yield, more food security. Mm -hmm. Well, in the interest of time, I think we just need to. Uh, I was uh, wondering if we could just uh, invite CB um, to join us for the panel. But thank you, Puck, for your presentation and for uh, giving us so much of your time today. Um, however, in the meantime, uh, I'm asking, while well, Sibi is getting uh, online as well, or at least, oh, he, he, you're already there. You were behind this little screen on my screen, so I, I was wondering <laughs> where you were. Uh, but uh, great to see you there. Uh, the attendees uh, 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 that are listening, um, we would uh, like to know from you if you've got any questions, any um, uh, or, or comments that you want to make that uh, we as a panel can respond on. Um, there is a block. Uh, there's a option within your uh, yeah on your webinar screen uh, to to enter questions, and the only people that can see the questions is we as uh, moderators can see the question and no one else, and uh, it's anonymous as well. So uh, feel free uh, to, uh, to put in any question that you have. Yes, I think we have uh, quite an interesting question to both Park mm -hmm. and CB. I, I don't yeah. know who starts to uh, answer this question. Uh, maybe I'll start with Park because he's just uh, finished his presentation. There's an issue of course, of technologies yeah. that you have presented to the attendees today, um, what are the different? What is the what are the major changes in terms of cost? What are the major costs that one would inquire in moving from uh, 
open cultivation maybe to polyhouse and then from polyhouse to uh, computerized and hydroponic uh, cultivation yeah thanks for uh, asking the question um, it every, all technology costs money mm -hmm. uh, but what we do and that's also why we differentiate from uh, from other greenhouse providers is for example with the polyhouses we have a local supplier of our greenhouses we have a partner who's producing the polyhouses locally and on that way we can keep the costs down and we only uh, import like the the critical elements of the greenhouse for having like the the, the best uh, use of the greenhouse but for example the irrigation unit it has to be perfectly working otherwise it it, it will not uh, yeah you cannot uh, really uh, make best use of, of your investment uh, so on that way we keep the costs down but yeah all all the steps in technology will add up some costs and that's also why i why i said like all situations have a different requirement of technology it's depending on what what climate you are growing what skills the grower has uh yeah and what kind of money uh, is available for uh, for the investment what kind of crop you are growing um a question here for uh, uh cb what is the level of awareness amongst the government and the universities in India uh, in, in understanding the benefits of a, a high high tech greenhouse technology and uh, reducing, of course, uh, pesticides, etc., as well as uh, related to food safety? Can you what can you tell us more about that? Um. Uh, the level of awareness is uh, still uh, on the early stage. There are a lot of discussions as such. Um, take for example, uh, there are there are uh, uh, model model cities, not more I can say model villages, uh, especially uh, who have uh, become hundred percent pesticide free, and uh, uh, this is. Uh, 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 villages are giving uh, very good examples, and uh, the government, uh, the local governments are supporting on that angle also. But having said that, uh, it's still on the early stage. There is still a long way to go. And uh, finally, it's it's uh, the cost-benefit analysis. Just connected to the earlier question and this together, if yep. uh, the, the the growers they finally see that they can produce a product which they can sell. Then uh, uh, finally, it's, it's all about uh, getting the benefit, the cost benefit uh, situation. So let us say that government is uh, uh, supportive in a lot of uh, these aspects. They also see how to reduce the use of uh, Harmful pesticides. Uh, why I say is uh, in, it, it has two ways. Instead of saying uh, completely stop, uh, it should uh, a better way to use it is reduce or use judiciously. Uh, so uh, we have a concept of leave and let leave uh, mm -hmm. for all all the uh, sectors in, in in the industry. So. Uh, uh, there are there are certain uh, uh, classic examples uh, uh, three or four uh, places uh, the villages in uh, Andhra Pradesh I was uh, listening to a, a TED uh, talk some time back uh, the speaker was talking about one particular village where the farmers some of the farmers had even committed suicide and the farmers together decided okay we cannot grow anything here. Let's sell off the entire village. Uh, some organizations are coming in and they are changing it into a model uh, village with a lot of production, a lot of output, with uh, almost no use of pesticides, grow, mm. going into more organic uh, growing, which also helping them to find a suitable marketplace for it. So, uh, 
understanding it that okay we can produce it also we can sell it that is a key part so government mm -hmm. is already working on it mm. well thank you so much um and uh, i think we're going to wrap up this uh, webinar uh, and uh, this time for the for the questions uh, as the time is flying by um yeah let us um, just let you know that uh, in a, a week uh, we have uh, our uh, the 8th of october i believe uh, we have our next webinar and uh, the two companies that uh, will be there will be Coppert and Rijkswaan, and they will both uh, do a presentation uh, about, you know, we go back from the plant, we have talked about plate production, and we are going now to the plant, and to see how they manage uh, their company in relationship with uh, food safety issues. And uh, we have uh, different speakers that uh, are well, uh, yeah, first in the, in the subject. Um, so, I don't know, Daniel, is there anything else that uh, we uh, should uh, uh, should mention before we close? Well, I think uh, it is important to first of all thank the presenters for the day, uh, C.B. Josephs and uh, Park De Rightly so. Um, thank you very much, guys, for joining us for this wonderful presentation. Um, well, I think because we are now wrapping up, I would like to maybe just ask a quick question to both of you gentlemen. If a grower decides to invest in this technology into upgrading of their production system, um, what comes first? Is it high productivity and then food safety? Or is it food safe, producing food in a safe way and then target productivity? How should a farmer think? What should be in the mind of the grower? In my uh, opinion, Park? Oh, I think I'll start with Park. <laughs> In my opinion, it always go uh, hand by hand. When you when you do an improvement, it, it both improves it improves like the food safety, but it also improves uh, the yield and the water efficiency. Yeah, yeah. And but, from but the, the grower, yeah. oh, the grower has sorry. to think about like uh, what will I gain, not not first about what are the costs, but for first he has to think about what will I gain? What is the opportunity? How more yield do I get? How more water efficient I am? How, uh, yeah, what will I increase with food safety uh, issues? And then you can calculate if, if the investment is worth it and you have a good uh, return on, on investment. Yeah, thank you. NCB? I, I agree with Buck on that. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the products, the productivity and the food safety, it should go hand in hand. Having said that, I would also say that, irrespective of the technology and the inputs, we always have a saying in the industry that the grower makes a difference. So, finally, it's, it's his efforts, and he should make sure that. Uh, to, to survive, he should go step by step. Uh, excitement is good, but also follow the right advisors, have the perfect advisors, right partners. Don't uh, look into too much uh, on the cost cutting part. Of course, cost cutting can be good as long as you don't compromise the quality of your inputs. Because I have come across a lot of uh, growers in the initial stages in countries like Slovakia and uh, Romania, where many years back they started with small polyhouses and step by step, recently I have seen them with high tech, beautiful glass houses. And it, it, it's a process they develop step by step. So growers should know that uh, the, the policy that, the principle that if you have a canvas, only then you can draw the picture. So Take care that they survive and also follow the processes step by step. Production is very important for the survival. Food quality is, uh, the, the, the safety is important in the long run. That's what I would like to say. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, have a lovely afternoon. Uh, we would like to invite uh, the attendees to join us next week for our upcoming uh, webinar on in the webinar series, The Journey from Plant to Plate, where webinar three will focus on food safety and uh, plant management within the supply chain. I think as Mark has highlighted, this will be also, we will be joined by Rikes One and Copet for the webinar series. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, thank you. I wish you a lovely afternoon. And thank you for the attendees you. for joining us. Uh, we wish you a lovely day. Thank you. All right.